What do you do when you want to record a drum set or a grand piano, but you don't have access to those in your home studio? Well, that is where MIDI devices and external instruments come into play. I've got two situations and two scenarios we're going to run through. The first one is an affordable option called the M-Audio Oxygen 25. I'm not even sure they make this anymore, but essentially this is a lightweight key design that has only 25 notes on it and is completely powered off of a USB cable. This doesn't have any sounds built into it. So if I hit these keys, even when it's powered on, no sounds come out of my speakers. But what this does do is it cues the samples and the instruments that are loaded on my computer. So if I want this D key to be an organ, it can be an organ, it can be a violin, it can be a cello, it can be a drum set, whatever you want it to be. I'm gonna show you how to hook this up in today's video. And then if you have access to a larger keyboard like this Casio Privia, this is a fully weighted, large size keyboard normally used for piano sounds and things like that. This does have built-in sounds, but again, I don't want to use the sounds built into the keyboard. I want to use this as a MIDI controller. And I'm going to show you how to hook up a device like this that runs off of MIDI. I'm going to show you how to hook up your M Audio Oxygen 25 or any keyboard that runs off of USB or MIDI. My name is Chris Green. My whole channel is about helping musicians make music and record that music. If you're interested in stuff like this, please hit the like button and subscribe button, and we'll get started with PreSona Studio One setting up external MIDI instruments. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is once you have PreSona Studio One loaded, go ahead and create your song or open up whatever session you've already started. I'm gonna call this one MIDI. It's gonna be saved in my K drive. I'm gonna hit OK. All right, I've got a brand new session on Studio One open. First thing I need to do is plug in my USB powered MIDI device. So on the back, there is a USB cable. These USB cables can be found just about everywhere. If your printer, if you still have a printer, it probably runs off of the same USB cable as well. Whatever MIDI device you get, it probably comes with its own cables that you can use. These will run off of USB 2 or USB 3. Either one's just fine. If you have your MIDI device plugged in correctly, you should see the lights come on and now it is powered and ready to go. On PreSonus Studio One, I've got a brand new song open. I'm gonna to go to Studio One and Options. In the Options menu, there's a tab for External Devices. This is where we're going to add whatever our MIDI instrument is. So I'm gonna go down here where it says Add. I wanna select New Keyboard. Now I know your keyboard might be on the templates list already. It's totally up to you if you wanna go with any of those. You can try to find your specific model, but really nine times out of 10, you can just add your own keyboard. It'll be just fine. I'm adding a keyboard and by keyboard, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna be using it for piano sounds or synth sounds. It's really looking, do you have keys on your instrument? Okay, a lot of MIDI controllers, they may not even have these piano keys at all, but if you have piano keys, make sure new keyboard is selected. If you have new keyboard selected, I'm gonna name the manufacturer. I'm gonna go ahead and type in M Audio, give it whatever name will be recognizable to you. And the device name, I'm gonna call this one Oxygen 25, just like it's labeled on this. Now we're gonna go down to where it says Receive From and make sure you select your keyboard. If you've got your USB keyboard plugged in correctly or whatever MIDI interface you're using, it should be available there. My RME interface does have a MIDI port that I can make use of if I want to. It's not meaning that that's necessarily gonna be the best option, but it's totally up to you if you have that available. I'm gonna select Oxygen 25. So now all of the information for this controller is coming from the Oxygen 25 through the USB cable into the computer. Now the Send To function is not gonna be used most of the time unless you have built-in sounds. So this M-Audio Oxygen 25, it doesn't have any sounds loaded into the keyboard. If it did, on the Send To, I could select Oxygen 25. That way you can actually play MIDI notes from your computer and the sounds are gonna come from your keyboard. With this keyboard set up, I'm actually sending the data from the keyboard to the computer. And the only other option I wanna to mention to you if you're starting out is default instrument input. If this is your only MIDI instrument or external device that you use and you keep it plugged in on the regular, make sure you have that one checked and then click OK. Now you can see on our external devices tab, we have the Oxygen 25. We can see that it is plugged in and ready to go. Now we can hit the OK button. Well, we're not done yet. That's just the setup option, we need to add a track. You've seen me do this in many of my videos. 
Whenever you go to add a track, you've seen this many a times, audio and instrument. This is a little bit confusing to me. Maybe they should change the vernacular a little bit because when I see instrument, I think, oh, instrument, drum set, guitar, bass, piano. Well, that's not what Studio One means. When it has instrument listed, it's talking about a MIDI instrument or an external instrument that's being cued from sounds coming from the computer. So I actually have drum sets and samples on my computer. And the only way that those make sounds is if I use a device like this to make the sounds come out of my speakers. It's very different. I can have a drum set in real life, okay? I want you to think of the audio tab as being analog and the instrument tab being digital. So these are digital instruments, virtual instruments, things like that. Audio is gonna be something like your spoken voice, vocals, anything you're recording with a microphone, or anything you're playing in real life, like a drum set or a bass guitar, that is actually under audio. Instrument is anything that's digital. So I'm gonna select instrument because let's say we want to have an organ sound, okay? I'm gonna call this instrument organ. I want one organ track and I want it to be orange. Now it's a very important part where it says input. Our input needs to be the new device that we just created, Oxygen 25. Output, we can either use new instrument or existing instrument. I don't have any instruments loaded just yet, but for right now I'm gonna select new instrument so we can start finding our organ. First thing you wanna do is when you load your instrument, your MIDI instrument, you wanna look up at this bar right here and go ahead and tap a few keys and you should see some orange bars jumping around. That's a good sign that means that our instrument is working. Now I want you to go down to the bottom right where it has this browse tab. On the browse menu, I want you to go up to the top where it says instruments. And this will be a folder where you have all of your MIDI or external instruments, your sample libraries, all those things loaded. If you're just starting out with PreSonus Studio One, you probably already have these loaded. If you don't, check out my video on the installation process with Studio One recommended installation. One of the things I mentioned is you need to download this one called Presence. Presence, whether you're using the artist version or if you have the professional version of Studio One, Presence has some really great diverse set of instruments that you'll want to be able to use. Hopefully you've got a few sample libraries already loaded. I'm gonna use PreSonus built-in Presence. I'm gonna click and drag this onto that track where it says organ. As Soon as I do, it opens up a window and from that window, I can click this preset here, drop down menu. I wanna to go to where it says organ, and let's go with organ full. All right, now that I've got it loaded, we can test it to see if it's working. So if I just play a G chord here. Wow, that's crazy loud, okay? So it's very, very loud. One thing about external instruments or VSTs, they are always way too loud. So on the volume, knob right here. I want you to take this and turn it down to something like negative 12 would probably be good. Now we want to record a little bit with our virtual instrument. So I've got my keyboard here in my lap. Again, the thing I really like about this affordable one is that it's very lightweight. I could just put this in my lap. I can record a few passes and then I'm good. So let's go down here. Let's hit the metronome button so we can hear what's going on there. And let's hit record. All right, now we've recorded our first MIDI instrument. And as you can see, the thing that's different about MIDI instruments is that we don't have the waves that we're normally seeing when we're recording something that's analog. That's because it's all MIDI notes. Click the edit button at the bottom right and you'll actually see the MIDI notes here that I was playing. So all of these bars right here are the notes that I was playing. And if I hit the space bar, we can listen back to what I just did. Okay, as you can see, a lot of my performance is very much off, but with MIDI instruments, it wouldn't be MIDI unless we selected all of these, just click and drag. And if you hit the Q button on your keyboard, everything will be quantized. So now I've got notes that are much more close to where they're supposed to be. I can drag these notes all over the place. I can play something completely different than what I originally recorded. So let's take a listen to this.
sounds really bad, okay? But you can take these MIDI notes and manipulate them all over the place. This is why people love using MIDI because it allows you to edit so many things after the fact. So let's go back to where we were here. Once you've quantized everything, you can go through and really nitpick these and put them exactly where they're supposed to be. Just click and drag wherever you want to go. So that's an example of the M-Audio Oxygen 25. This is a USB powered MIDI instrument or external instrument. You can use this to cue whatever sounds you want. If I go up here to where it says organ and I've got the keyboard selected, let's say I don't want it to be an organ anymore. Now I want it to be a, let's go to brass and let's go to French horn, French horn full. Now when I hit play on this track, Sounds terrible, but as you can see, after we've recorded MIDI instruments, you can always go in and manipulate, change the entire sound if you want to have fun with that. When you're done with MIDI, if you have a performance that you really like, the next thing I wanna recommend that you do is hit Control B on your keyboard. What that will do is it bounces your MIDI file into an analog recorded file. So now you have essentially committed to the sound of the French horn now you can go in and mix this just like you would any of your other instruments, okay? That's just a little extra tip there. Now with that being said, we need to jump into the fully weighted Casio keyboard. It has a little bit different process, so let's jump in right there. So the M-Audio device came with a USB cable. You just plug in, you're ready to go. Not every keyboard is made with that intent in mind. In 2023, most keyboards being made today, they'll come with some sort of USB cable. But if you have an older keyboard like this Casio, Privi this Casio Privia, you can get yourself one of these M-Audio USB MIDI adapters. Okay. This is essentially a MIDI interface right in this blue block. Okay. I believe when I got this, this was about $30. It's an extremely long cable and it's very useful. I've had a couple of these over the years. Never had any problems with them. They hold up really, really well. But one end of them is a USB, just like we used with the M-Audio Oxygen 25. So I'll go ahead and plug that in. The other end of this M-Audio cable has a MIDI in and a MIDI out connector. Now make sure you, before you order any cables, check the side and the back of your keyboard. Make sure that it has a MIDI in and a MIDI out. So the MIDI in goes into the MIDI in port, MIDI out goes into MIDI out. In to in, out to out. All right, now I've got my Casio Privia plugged in with the MIDI in and MIDI out. Let's do the same thing we did before, go up to Studio One and Options, because the first thing we need to do is we need to add this external device, because it's different than the Oxygen. I'm gonna hit the Add button, go up here to New Keyboard. It is a Casio for the manufacturer and Privia. Receive from, okay, whenever you're using this M Audio MIDI interface, you wanna select USB Uno MIDI interface and send to. This Casio Privia actually has sounds built in. So if I turn this volume knob up, you might be able to hear. Most of the time I'm not using the sounds from the Casio, but it is available on this one, whereas the M-Audio Oxygen didn't have any built-in as well. And just like the other one, I can select this as my default instrument input. If I had both of these keyboards plugged in at the same time, I want this one to be my default for sure. It's got the heavy weighted keys and it has a full range of keys rather than just 25. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now we got the Casio Privia loaded. Let's add an instrument and let's go to the instrument tab and let's call this one Guitar, call it Guitar Fake, just so I know it's the fake one, okay? I'm gonna change the color to green. Our input is gonna be the Privia rather than the Oxygen. We're gonna use the Casio Privia. Yeah, you have an option between new and existing instrument. Here's where you can get into trouble. If you continue to use existing instrument, every time you change that virtual instrument from let's say the French horn into a guitar, it will change all of your previous virtual instrument tracks that are using that same instrument. So as often as you can, try using a new instrument rather than existing. I'll show you that problem in just a minute, okay? So go to existing instrument. We'll go ahead and select presence. So now when I click on guitar, as you can see, it's got the French horn loaded. The 
problem is, as you can see, this organ track up here is also orange. Anything I do to change this, it's as if I'm changing like a guitar amp, okay? You wanna try to add as many instruments as you can if your computer can handle it because you'll really get yourself into a bind if you record 20 different MIDI tracks and then you go back and listen and all of your MIDI tracks are playing the same instrument. Not very good, okay? You can add as many instruments as your computer can handle, so just keep that in mind. So I'm back on Guitar Fake. Instead of this French horn, we wanna to go to the Guitar folder. Let's go with a nylon string guitar legato. Now, as far as sample libraries go, there are so many options out there. Of course, the ones that you spend big bucks on, they will have or tend to have better sounding sounds on them. But when you're a person that, like me, I use a lot of real instruments like drums, bass, guitars, all that kind of stuff. A lot of times when I'm adding a MIDI instrument, I'm just looking for something that's giving me a little flavor on the outside. I'm not looking for like the main sound of my track, but enough about that. We can go ahead and record a little bit of nylon string guitar with this Casio Privia. I'm gonna turn on my metronome and hit record. Okay. And the same thing applies as earlier. Here we have a MIDI track. I can double click this region right here. It'll pull up in the edit window. I can of course select as many notes as I want and I can hit the Q key to quantize. From there, you feel free to edit your MIDI stuff as much as you want to. Just remember to use that control B to bounce your track as soon as you're done playing whatever instrument you've got. By bouncing the track, you're really committing to the sounds and it's gonna make it a lot easier when you go to edit, when adding EQ, reverb, and all that kind of stuff as well. I hope that helps you get up and running using MIDI and external instruments and PreSonus Studio One. Again, try to go the affordable route if you can. If you already have keyboards that you're using pretty regularly, check out the M-Audio USB MIDI interface. And then if you can, get something that's a little bit affordable if you don't have any keyboards, something that can fit in your lap, something that's lightweight, you'll be glad that you have it. And then of course, check out my videos on installing stuff in PreSonus Studio One because you wanna check out Presence and a lot of the other virtual instruments they already have loaded. Thanks so much for watching this video. My name is Chris Green. If you would, please hit the subscribe and like buttons and I'll see you next time. All right, bye.